Okay, it's day 41. It's a week before the winter solstice in 2013, and that means the days are very short. It's 4 p.m., almost no sunlight gets in. And I'm not liking this potting mix because it's uh, breeding fungus gnats. So as you can see over here from my ginger growing experiment, I had to reset after a really, really bad fungus gnat infestation. I have a solar reflector made out of cardboard and aluminum foil to get as much light reflecting back as possible. But as you can see, there's hardly any light anyways. I'm not liking this part of the experiment. You can see a ring of mold on that seed husk. And you know I think that looks moldy too. These wood chips just hold on to water forever and never dry out. And I can't even find the third seed here. The other problem is everything just kind of blends in. In the center here, you can see a fungus gnat larva. There are transparent worms with black heads that are very hard to detect at first. What you'll mostly see is the adults flying around in your living room you know, or wherever your indoor potted plants are. And they can spawn in the hundreds or thousands per day. So infestations can become very serious. These little creatures basically eat fungi and the root hairs of plants. These little wood chips that comprise potting mix never get to dry out. So that creates a great environment for mold growth and you can see why there's mold on these seed husks. So I started looking around for my seeds buried in here. There are six total that are buried. Three were on the surface. I couldn't even find the third one that was supposed to be on the surface. It's incredibly difficult because everything is camouflaged. I only managed to recover seven out of nine seeds from this experimental group in soil. The others are just lost. And I think these are more spherical than the seeds in the other two groups. So maybe that's a good sign. This is the sunlight group, although that's kind of a misnomer around the winter solstice. The amount of sun these things get is so little. But, you know, some of these are more faded or bleached in color. Um, others retain their color a little bit more, you know, the earthy, sort of earthish red color. So, I don't know if these are going to make it. We'll see. And I'm going to compare that to the PC group here. Uh, the PC group, you know, I've immersed these in more hydrogen peroxide, you know, more volume, not concentration. And that seems to have you know, sort of whited out all these seeds, bleached them, so to speak. And you can see the embryo is sticking out and the seed husks have degraded a little bit, which is what we want. So I, I think this thing could go places. I would say this one looks the healthiest. Okay, it's day 42. In the background, I'll be showing you footage of the process I undertook to make a soil mixture substitute for the potting mix. That was just an unmitigated disaster. So there are three ingredients, and in the meantime, I'll talk to you about the value of American ginseng. So much like Chinese ginseng, it can fetch a very high price. The price that American ginseng roots can fetch depends on how old they are and in what conditions the plants were grown in, as well as, you know, the more shallow characteristics, such as the overall appearance of the root and the size of the root. So it's believed that ginseng plants that grew in a wild environment or a wild simulated fashion in forests where these plants naturally grow have more potent medicinal properties because they've suffered through the trials and tribulations of the harsh winters and also all those environmental problems you know feeding grazing by insects and mammals over the years and that makes them a lot more valuable than ginseng grown very quickly, three to four years in a synthetic environment or in a laboratory, even quicker. In the wild, American ginseng takes about 10 years to mature in the forest, and during that time, you'll have poachers trying to steal it and animals trying to eat it, as well as just the environmental brutality that will be inflicted on these plants. Whereas uh, cultivated ginseng is usually in a greenhouse or you know, maybe in a laboratory, so it's in a very safe, sterile environment grows much quicker to achieve the same root size and maturity. It only takes three to four years or even less in very good conditions. So cultivated ginseng is priced at about $50 per pound in 2012 prices. All right, it's day 70. I've been on vacation for quite a long time. Been gone for, I think, two and a half weeks. So that's two and a half weeks where there's been no watering and no fresh hydrogen peroxide which was normally something I'd change every few days. For this sunlight group, you know, I never opened the lid. I used to have the lid ajar, 
but I figured by closing that I'd keep the oxygen from the hydrogen peroxide in, I'd keep the environment sterile. Likewise for this PC group I've done the same thing because it would have dried out a long time ago. One of the first things I noticed was that the lid of the PC group has condensation all over it. It's sitting on top of a computer, evaporation is faster even though it's only a little bit warmer than the sunlight group. So that's the difference right there. The PC group kind of has a bad smell if it ever gets to dry out. In this case it just didn't smell great but it didn't smell bad either. But the sunlight group had an earthy smell to it which makes it seem very promising. It seems like there's biochemical activity going on within those seed embryos and they're releasing compounds. So to recap what I was describing earlier, before I would just have the lids ajar like that on both of these groups and hence the PC group would dry out sometimes and smell bad you know but for this vacation I just pressed the lids down so it was completely airtight and sterile for the PC group I don't know if you can tell but they seem a lot thicker than they used to and maybe that's because they took a long time to soak up and you know expand I don't know it seems like they would have expanded in the first few days and that would have been that so it looks like the seed husks are smaller in the middle. You can kind of see one that's pretty thick and it looks like there's a very healthy embryo inside about to bust out. So it seems like I'm making progress with this PC group. I'm not sure, but it's still three months away from April. So for the sunlight group, having the lid on this whole time actually prevents, you know, the outdoor sunlight from hitting the seeds. So I'm going to try a different approach. Um, maybe just use artificial lighting for my ginger that's worked a lot better than this you know oblique winter lighting that I've been getting from through the window so these seeds have a different appearance they're darker they've always been compared to the PC group and you can see the embryos inside have kind of an orange tint to them I don't know if that's good or bad you know and others have kind of the same more yellow or whitish appearance and these seeds look kind of like pastries that have been soaking in water for a really long time but at the same time I feel that because there was a very earthy medicinal smell when I opened this jar that this is by far the most promising and developed group I don't know what's going on with the seeds that are buried in the soil group but you know I think those have a lesser chance of making it just because they've been exposed to mold and bad wet conditions for so long. So there you have it. I'm going to replace the water in both of these with fresh 0.5% hydrogen peroxide solution and I'm going to seal the lid on this PC1 to prevent evaporation and because of that I've kept the water level low so they're half immersed and half exposed to air within this sealed Tupperware container. For the sunlight group, I'm using plastic wrap instead of the lid and that will allow the maximal amount of light to get through since everything's transparent. I was thinking of actually getting some lights to shine on this thing, uh, artificial light rather than relying on sunlight because the sunlight is so weak during the winter, especially indoors. For the soil group, the drawback is I can't observe any activity for the 7 out of 9 original seeds because they're buried and all I can do at this point is observe where the moisture is and it seems from the profile that the top half or third might be moist and the bottom just looks bone dry but you never know about the interior and you know how this thing can dry out maybe it only dries out on the edges where you know it's touching the glass and exposed to the warmth from the environment I don't know so I'm gonna water again with a little more hydrogen peroxide Here's my hydrogen peroxide spray bottle. I use this to make all my dilutions. I made permanent marker markings. I fill up to the 10 mark with distilled water, then up to the 12 and 3% hydrogen peroxide for a 1 to 6 dilution from 3% to 0.5%. So I'm going to use this to spray and hence water my new custom potting mix. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe this was really dry. The sand is changing color because it's wet now. And I think the sand just does a really good job at wicking away moisture and preventing mold growth, which is good. But at the same time, I want a certain level of moisture for the seeds. Otherwise, if they're completely dry, they won't be developing at all. 
I'm going to fast forward here and this illustrates how painstaking it is to water by spraying. So I'm just going to pour it. So that had a drawback too. Since there's no aeration at the bottom, the air just rises to the top in bubbles. And the sphagnum peat moss chunks weigh less, so they separate from everything else and float to the top. And there you can see like a seed floated to the top. So that's annoying. I'm just going to push it back in. Maybe this isn't going to work out, and I'm just going to have to get real dirt and plant these seeds and do another transplant, so to speak. So this experimental group has just been disturbed. I've lost two seeds and I really don't know whether these seeds are going to make it or not and whether there's any significance because I keep changing the conditions but overall this is just you know a condition where I have things in soil or simulated soil so I'll try to rectify the situation in the next episode but for now you know um, I really can't guarantee anything for this group but at the same time you need a group buried in dirt because that's what would happen in the wild although I don't really see how those seeds would get buried, you know, maybe they'd just be buried under leaf litter in a forest, but there's no animal that's going to be pushing every single seed into the dirt. So going back to the topic of ginseng poaching, in China Manchuria, Panax ginseng has been harvested to the brink of extinction. Over here in the U.S. and Canada, uh, there are a lot of ginseng poachers, and these are people who have no other economic prospects usually so they'll just put on a backpack and go into the forest and start ripping up ginseng young and old and they could basically make $500 in 2012 money a day with very little you know effort compared to many other jobs where it would take an extreme amount of effort and education to make $500 a day 